Hello and welcome to The Coaching Podcast, coaching for success in sport and business. Your host is Emma Doyle, the energy and high performance under pressure coach who is a world leader in unleashing human potential. Buckle up for this high octane session. Let them have it, coach. G'day, everybody, and welcome to The Coaching Podcast. I am here today with Sayran Aquari, and she is an engineer, she's an innovator, business coach, leadership strategist, transformational team leader, and she has a definitely a passion for effective communication. And I love her rich background in engineering uh, and being dedicated to driving technical solutions and advancing organizational excellence, amongst many other things. I love your ability to problem solve. So I'm going to throw something at you straight away, say run. And that is, do you prefer to go to the movies old school or would you prefer to stream things and watch it at home? What's your take? I'm not even a movie person. I don't watch TV. <clears throat> I prefer to read, uh, meditate and write. My biggest passion is writing. Oh, fantastic. Well, let's go there straight away. What are you writing about at the moment yeah. as it relates to coaching? Of course, nonfiction, as we talked before, uh, I'm not a story, you know, I don't write novel or stories. I love about nonfiction, different varieties, subjects, uh, as you said, because of my background in as engineering. So my my brain is wired in a, in a, in a place that stra- everything's strategy, everything is an equation. Uh, if it's the issue even related to a human being, I treat it like an equation. I got to solve it or at least guide the client to the right path and the clarity to find their way to solving it. Right now, I'm right. I'm trying to write the outline for my proposed, you know, I'm thinking to write a book just solo for myself because the, my first book, I was just a co-author and it wasn't really the thing that I want to write. Rather, um, the, the uh, owner of that company reached out to me saying that a lot of people inspire about your story coming to the United States are you willing to write a chapter about your story coming here? And right away, I thought about the name. I said, okay, the truth about the American dream. Because when I was outside the United States, my impression and my idea about the U.S. is totally different when you really come here and live and decide to make it home. So that was the one book. And now I'm thinking to write something that really related to coaching, best communication, how to get that inner peace, how we can communicate with others, how to gain clarity and focus. Because with all the noise, coach, as you know now, there is a lot of noise and distraction. And my goal is to mute that noise and focus on your goal. Could you take us back to your uh, early story? I know you were a swimming coach back in Iraq. Um, Take us back to the moment you know, that period of your life and what did coaching mean to you then and why did you come to the United States? I'd love to hear that backstory. Back when I was in, in Iraq, uh, life to me was very limited, meaning I thought if I am good in sport and if I get an A grade, then I'm a perfect package. And I was wrong. I didn't know better. I was young. I was a teenage. I was in my 20. So I I love to swim because to me, swimming is kind of meditation. You are with that wave. You are swimming with that water. You kind of, you can put all your stress within, you know, while you're swimming. It's like a, it, it's, it's like a long meditation alarm, just the same like meditation. So I swim for a long time. Then when I moved to the United States, again, I thought if I get a good job, a good marriage, life is perfect. Again, I was wrong. Because that's not that doesn't make you really discovering the best version of yourself. Because we as a human, we still have a lot of potential inside us. It just needs to be discovered. It just needs to be shown to the coming to the surface and shown to the universe. So when I came to United States, I was only 26, young, not married. Uh, I when I when when I was in Iraq, thinking coming to United States for some reason, I thought it's all about the American movie, you know, all Rambo and Rockies and and you know, life is rosy. And when I come to the U.S., people will welcoming me with the red carpet and flowers. Said, "Hey, Mrs. Engineer, guess what? You are perfect. Come on in. This is the best job for you." Guess what? That was exactly the opposite of what I faced. 
because when I came 1996, 1997, when I arrived to, to, the, to, to DC, I faced a lot of challenges, not just the culture and the language. It's a lot of things I was pushing it away not to blend in. I don't know if it was the old story telling myself like, no, I'm the good kid, I'm the good young lady, just just aiming a good job. I thought that's that's the perfect life. But while while I was going through my life, getting married, getting pregnant, having two kids, I learned that life is so deep. Even if you have the best, highest title in LinkedIn, you can make a lot of money. But if your soul and your inner peace is not in connection with the universe, if you are not able to give back, if you are not able to leave any impact, your title, degree, whatever you have at home doesn't mean anything. I can do a good job at engineering and I, could, I can do a better job at my coaching. But the question is, am I leaving an impact? Mm-hmm. That's what is matter. Am I making any different? If I can make one client able to gain clarity and focus to achieve their goal, that's mean I, I, I did a lot of things. Even one client. If each one of us do one portion, all together, we make this world a better place to live. So how do you help your clients discover their, in your words, hidden gem? You talk about unpacking this this hidden gem that lives within all of us. And I know you especially work with uh, women, uh, women going through transition in the mid part of their life. What are some of the ways that you do this as a coach? It's not easy, but it's doable. It's not an overnight journey. Some of them, they come up with the, their path is easier because they are younger. So if they are 35, 40, and they are in an IT world, but they know that IT world is not the, the things that they need to do for the rest of their life. So what I do, I start with a lot of questions. I want to unveil what is the inner peace coming from what they really love to do during the weekend or holiday what is that one thing that's make them not even look at the time something that take them away they don't feel the time they don't feel the effort if they refuse to talk about the past which i face with the men client because you know man come to the session i'm strong i'm a man i do it all i got figured it out what I do, I ask them what they do beside their job. Are they are handy? They write, they speak, um, they, they love gardening, they love to cook, uh, they love communication, they are into sport. So a lot of questions. And after that, I get to the deeper question. I ask them, like kind of like peeling the onion, like you know in coaching, we keep going deep and deep. And of course, I ask permission. Can I go further? Can I ask you another question? When I build that rapport and trust between us, I let them talk and I don't talk for 20, 30 minutes. And I just keep watching their eyes and their body language. And when their tone change and when the way how they speak and all by a sudden the smile come to their face, I know they are talking about something really interesting them. And I said, wait right there. What did you say? Oh, well, I don't know. I was painting in my teen, but it was a teenage thing. Can I show you some of my paint? And when they show me the paint, I said, and, and you hiding those? Yeah, I'm in IT. I'm a smart. I, no, no, wait. Are you showing this to anyone? Ah, oh, just family. Guess what? You are an artist. You, you, you paint those. That's a gift. That's your hidden gem. Why you are not sharing it with others? And Emma, not necessarily I encourage them to sell their gift. This is not about the money. It's about them feeling and sensing that gem is inside them. So they kind of like they see the value and how to bring that value to the service and how to share it with others. Mm. Discover it, cherish it, bring it. Be an entrepreneur in that hidden gem. Have a side business, at least an Instagram free, doesn't even cost you anything. And you know what? Most of those tech women, they come back to me. They said, since we start this hidden gem discovery, we stop whining about our day job, which is perfect. When they start that small business, they feel like an entrepreneur. They feel like, oh, I have a small business. I'm not 
not making that much money, but I really love it. Yeah, I think that there is an entrepreneur within all of us. Uh, I think it's a way of the future as well. Uh, somebody that I follow, he always talks about being a company of one. So looking at yourself as the CEO of your own life. And I was actually in Africa last week. That was my keynote. It was be the CEO of your own journey, which stood for curious emotional optimism and taking that concept of being curious, like you talk about in terms of launching a side business uh, to be able to, you know, and that, that's important for women as well. So, so tell me more about why you're so passionate in supporting women, especially in the mid, their midlife. You just said it. You said a very profound and strong word, Emma, curious. When we get older, we lose curiosity. Why you see always kids, mostly 99.9 .9 babies and kids are happy because they play, they sleep, and they eat. And they are curious about everything. They start walking. They're curious about the drawer. They open the drawer. They touch, they touch fire. They touch table. They touch food. They touch everything because their mind is always wired around curiosity. So when I come and, and to change my niche from international transition expert to a business coach, I wanted to bring that back the curiosity to all midlife women. In general, 35, 45, 55, 65, it doesn't matter. If you bring that curiosity, you're bringing that sense of, oh, I, I got why this happened. Let me see. Let me search. So you kind of like go back to the innovation. And this is why when they call, oh, who's entrepreneur? Not everybody's ready to be an entrepreneur. What is entrepreneur? Who's a small businesswoman? What is a small businessman? They are the people who make every problem, it's a place for innovating the solution. They look at the problem and they say, no, that's not a problem. That's a challenge. I got to solve it. They become entrepreneur like this because they innovate. They bring an idea and they find solution. So like you said, that curiosity that's what is making me pushing myself, saying, okay, I've been engineer for 35 years. I have a good job. I make money. My kids in college, life is good. But is that really what, what I want to do? Is that all? Am I happy? I'm going to leave this life saying, oh, I made money. I was a good engineer. My, link, my LinkedIn looked perfect. Okay. What else? What is the impact? We all came with a purpose. You have a purpose to accomplish. I came with a different purpose. And the main purpose in this life is to help each others. So the curiosity with me pushing myself to leave an impact, that's what is make me really share this talent with other women. When I see other tech women, they are not really happy at their job. I remember myself 10 years ago. Because being an engineer, making money, that's not all. And I always ask them the same question, never change. Tell me why you are not happy. And they, 99% of them, they said, we don't know. We make very good money. We have the best husband. We have a very big house. Kids, a student. Everything is perfect. Bills paid. But we are not happy. I said, is it you are not happy or you are not fulfilled? And they think about that word and said, what does that mean? I said, do you leave sense of purpose? Do you feel like you have a sense of purpose? Do you feel that you have to do something for others? Volunteer without, oh, no, we never thought about that. So that's what it is. They are missing their hidden gem. Okay, so let's say I'm your client and you've started to unpack my hidden gem, but I have this uh, huge imposter syndrome going on and I'm not quite sure whether I can step into my greatness and I'm not quite sure about how to really live my hidden gem. How do you work with clients in helping them overcome imposter syndrome? I face that with actually coaches. They are coaches, they are certified coaches, ACC, PCC, MCC, and they have a business and they have a niche, but they still have that confidence. They didn't really tap on that confidence really inside. And they come to me when they decided to change their niche, especially when they know that I changed mine. 
I had one niche before. I was international transition, only aiming international people come to the United States. Now I'm a business coach. And that imposter syndrome always comes between us because when I ask them, how comes you are, let's say I'll, I will make an, an example. You are a retirement coach. You are an ACC. Yeah, I, I, I become, I pick up that niche because I see when people, they retire, they don't know what to do after retirement. And when they talk about their niche, there's no excitement. I don't see the excitement. This is how I know they are ready to change their niche. So I ask them, what is on the way? <sighs> yeah, I have a platform. I had client, but I don't see that I'm adding anything to myself. I charge the client. I make money, but really there's something missing. There's, and this is how I know they are not really confident. There is no competence here. You don't feel, you don't feel the confidence. I can tell you from now until the next day. You're beautiful, you're smart, you're perfect. You are a perfect package, Emma. But the, if you are not really having it inside, if you really don't feel that you are competent for this job, you're not gonna listen to me. You're gonna feel that I am saying this because we are friends, we are coaches. So that's the, the, the imposter syndrome and the lack of self-esteem come from you not really working in your own skills. Just like Robert Greene talked about it in the mastery book. You need to be master in your niche. And when you become master, you do like what they said, the thousand hours rule, whatever it's called. When you are master, even if I come and critic you as a coach, you, you say, this is a noise. I'm not going to listen to her because I'm a master. So your self-esteem will come from you mastering your skills. So how does one take the first step? So are you saying that, Basically, to overcome it, you need to physically do it. I just want to. I just want to be clear on you defined it really well, but how can coaches help somebody take that first step in being more confident? Very good question. I love this because I have it with 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 a couple of women. They were in tech world and they were telling me they want this, they want that. It's all wish, 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 vent, vent, vent. I said, listen, you hire me to take you from A to B. Are you willing to take the action? Yeah, but let's, no, you're saying but after that. Are you willing? Are you really into it? Are you committed? Not even willing, that's the wrong word. Are you committed? They said, yes. Then I said, the next step is you. I'm not gonna hold your hands and do that action. For example, I have this lady coming to me a couple of times and she said, I love your coaching, but can you prepare me to go for a higher up engineering job? Can you prepare me for the interview? When I ask her to do certain things, she keeps telling me she can because she thinks she's not capable. I said, okay, why you think you are not capable? Because she said, I don't know about that subject. And I asked the question, what is on the way making you go to learn about that subject? Oh, time. No, 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 no. What is stopping you? I'm giving you the time. The interview is in three weeks. You have time from now until three weeks to take an action. So to answer your question is, for them to take the action, not me. I guide them. I am the coach. I am the change agent. I hold the light for them. They have to take the action, not me. This is their life. I want you to take action. Okay. So in one to a maximum of three words, what do you think makes a great coach? Mastering your skills, a good listener, and keep learning. Sometimes Client come to you, they have a deep obstacles. They start 20 minutes venting about something else. If you are a good coach, you will realize after 10 minutes, they are not really tapping on the subject they really want to talk about. So what does make you a good coach is just by listening first. Just listen to them. And you can tell after 20 minutes, the real obstacle the real thing that they wanted to coach about has nothing to do about what they just said for the past 20 minutes. But if you cut them off and you say, let me tell you what's work. Let me tell you, I've been doing coach. I, I will tell you what's work for you. You are not tapping on what they really want from you. So when you are really a good listener, they at the end, they will give you a hint that they really upset or they really see in a blocks and obstacle somewhere else. And when you find out this, then you tap on that somewhere else. So 
good listening. The other one, keep learning. What does that mean? A lot of coaches, they get their ACC, PCC, MCC. They put the fancy title in LinkedIn. They have a, you know, vivid color website. They have testimonial. They have flashlight on them. They have the best clothes. They wear the same thing, right? Everything's perfect. But if they stop learning, they're just staying where they are. And there's other who they continue learning, they're going to beat them in the business. So being a coach, you can't just satisfy with your PhD degree or your MCC. You still have to learn more skills because coaching is just it's like, a, it's like an ocean. It's so deep. The more you learn, Emma, the more you know you, ha- you, didn't, you don't know anything. So you mm-hmm. learn, you learn, you learn. And you said like, okay, no, I don't, I don't know anything. I still need to know other things. So yeah. listening and keep learning and the third Mastery one. Mastery your skills. Mastery. What does that mean? I'll give you an example. If I don't know how to swim, if I'm not mastering swimming, how can I teach you? I can't. I have to master the game myself. If I am a nutrition and I eat very bad, how can I force you to eat good? I need to master that thing, right? How can I be your coach if I haven't mastered the tools? In anything, even teaching, if I teach math and I suck in math, how can I teach you math? So I have to master my skill in order for me to be able to teach teach others. What about if somebody's listening to this and saying, okay, that all sounds fantastic, uh, you know, to dedicate mastery, but I'm a mom and I need to juggle being a mom and I need to juggle being good at my job and I need to juggle the side hustle. Do you think work-life balance actually exists? No, there is no balance. No. If you want to master something, you got to focus on that one thing. I'll give you an example. There's tech woman coming to me and they said they want to do their master degree in engineering. I said, okay, what else? Oh, I just got married. I want to get pregnant and I want to bring my mom from Middle East here. Okay, what other things? And my husband is traveling. I have to clean and cook. Okay, what else? What is your priority? Well, I am 35. I want to get pregnant which makes sense. That's the ideal, right? You don't want to wait so long to get pregnant. So I asked them, what is the most things that you really wanted to do it now? And the other things can put it away and we can postpone it for later. I think I to get pregnant. I want to have a baby. So my mom come and help me. Great, right? There is no balance here. She cannot get pregnant going to classes and master, bringing her mom, cleaning it. No. When people say there is balance, I listen, I don't attack that word a lot because sometimes we do multitasking, as you know, as a coach. You're doing podcasts, but I'm sure today you did 50 million other things, right? But if you really want to master your podcast, what do you do? You put content, you put the question, you reach out to the good guest, right? So you're mastering those four hours in one thing. You are not doing podcasts and answering your phone. I didn't see you eating while you 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 doing podcasts. I didn't see you answering your phone. Because you are focusing, you are not balancing your task. You are focusing this 30 minutes, one hour only with me because you want, you want to give it all. So when clients come to me, like you said, a lot of people say, oh, this is all good talking. You know, she got it all. This is why she's advising us. No, it was a struggle for me too. I was the full-time, I'm still a full-time employee and I have two kids 18 months apart. They were on, on kindergarten in elementary school while I was doing my master's degree, but I prioritize it. I put what is important. I was making sure they are fed, they are safe in my house. Then when they were asleep, I was doing my homework at 11 o'clock at night. I was not jeopardizing my, my motherhood or my relationship with them because I want to be a Mrs. Engineer. So there is no balance. So thank you for sharing sharing that. And I'm curious to hear about what disruptive idea do you have that will change the way that we coach in 2030? I think maybe the the first things I will tell people, if I'm still alive in 2030, I'll just say, get up and go and walk. Stop sitting. We sit so much. We all sit so much, so many hours. We just don't realize it. We sit for so long. 
And like they said in the study, sitting is like another smoking, I guess, is another way of smoking. Maybe in 2030, and I said that, you know why? Because on 2030, the technology AI will be even way more, you know, around us. So we will be even sitting more because you're going to be on those gadgets and, you know, phone and iPad more. So it's look like the sitting percentage on 2030 will be even longer. So maybe in coaching, that's the only thing I'll ask the client. Put that phone away and go out and walk. <laughs> that's what I have. I don't know what else I can add. Well, I mean, I like that one of your working titles with your writing is no parking. You know, keep moving, uh, take action. Would you say that summarizes how you've lived your life? I just, uh, I didn't park. Um, I didn't park where I live. I don't. I, I didn't even stay long where I originally born. I took the risk. I embraced the unknown. I really embraced the unknown. I took that airplane, came to the United States, not knowing where I'm going. I just hate the parking because I had a couple of incidents back in in the country that that was not the best things for me to stay. Besides not being safe back then, uh, it's better now, but. It was the best things for me to stop parking and come to the United States. Uh, same thing is applied to relationship, Emma. Uh, friendship, uh, being a partner with, with, with your husband, having kids for 20 years. If it doesn't work, don't park. Keep it's growing, keep way. learning. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Just, you tell her on next because next has two things. You have two options when you don't park. You tap in on the next chapter, right? So the next either will be a better option or a bad option. If it's better, great, you learn the lessons. If it's the bad option, again, cut it off, cancel it, and move on. But if you park and keep telling yourself the same story on and on and on, you are wasting your time and effort while there is a million things waiting for you to evolve mm -hmm. and to innovate. So that's exactly what I did to my life, and I'm going to continue doing it until I can breathe. <laughs> well, you have a very inspiring story, and I wanted to just finish, I know, to get to where you are today and everything you've done and reading your background, you really believe in networking and building professional relationships and and just, you know, really reaching out to me. It was a cold email, and, and when I heard more about your story, I really wanted to get you on the show and and make the show as diverse and, and inclusive as, as possible. So what tips have you got to help people be better networkers and build those professional relationships to help, to help you get to where you want to go? What, what's your final sort of tips out there for coaches around networking? Network is important, but you have to be careful who you are networking with. There is some networking is just wasting time. You go there, they they offer a free lunch or free dinner. You take a couple of Instagram pictures and you go home learning nothing. There is some networking, even it's not in a big platform, it's in small platform, but it will take you to very interesting places. And I believe in networking, which is involved traveling. That's very important because when you travel, you open up. You are away from your house, from your comfort zone. You get delayed at the airport. You get annoyed by things happening at the airport. By the time you arrive to your destination, you are totally a different person because you, you turn it on and off. You said, okay, I'm not going to ruin my day. I'm here for an event. I'm going to take the best out of this network. So you act like a new person. When you travel, you open up in many ways, especially if you travel outside world, like United States, if you go to Europe and Middle East, because you see other people's perspective and your network will be valuable a lot when you go to a places that really difficult for you to attend. And I'll give you an example. Let's say you are a coaches and you master in your coach. You make a lot of money. Everybody talk about your website, your LinkedIn, everything's perfect. And you, you were invited in a network about, let's say, marketing. You are a coach. You know a little bit about marketing, but you have someone who's doing marketing for you. So marketing is not really your niche. Marketing is not your baby. Your baby is coaching, right? You're going to learn so much at that network because you are uncomfortable. Why is the best place for you? 
because you're going to ask a lot of questions. Vice versa, if you go to a network that's all coaches and you are the best one in the room, you are not learning anything. Mm. You're repeating the same story. But if you go to that marketing summit, which you know nothing about, but you are willing to learn about marketing because you want to do more marketing in your business, those people who are higher up in marketing, they're going to challenge you. You're going to feel intimidated in the beginning. You'll be like, oh, why am I even here? What was that bad idea? I come here. But when you leave, you will leave with different perspective. You will learn that you have a lot of potential to learn. Yeah. What's your best question to ask somebody to help them discover their hidden gem? It's the question that's difficult to all of us, which I ask, what do you really want to do? What do you really want yeah. inside you? What do you really, really, really want in your life? Mm, that's what I love my question. I love the emphasis on really, and as you said, just keep peeling peeling back the layers. Great advice for coaches. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for learning. Thank you for your mastery. Everybody, please remember no parking. Just keep asking yourself what's next and keep unpacking the hidden gem within yourself and within others so that we can live the best story of our life. Sayran, thank you so much for being on the coaching podcast. Thank you, uh, Emma, for having me. And this was wonderful. I love your question. I love your energy. And, and I love also your background, where you come from. I'm very impressed about your work and the impact that you are making and you're continuing to make. I know you're not going to stop. Thank you. Absolutely. There's no stopping here on the show. We appreciate you all and enjoy your coaching. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating review on your podcast listening device. And don't forget to tell a fellow coach about the show. The ball is in your court to take action and enjoy your coaching.